when it comes to important discoveries of the past few years, I think apart from the very interesting results from the clinical trial of the drug rituximab, um, it's very difficult to isolate anything and say that is a major breakthrough in our understanding of this illness. That is a major piece of the ME jigsaw fitting into place. I think what we are seeing at the moment is a number of small pieces of this ME CFS jigsaw starting to fit into place. So these are pieces of information, as I say, rather like pieces of a jigsaw in relation to what is going on in the brain. And in particular here, I think I, I would like to highlight the work of Professor Julian Newton up in Newcastle here in the UK, who has done some really solid work on the role of what we call this autonomic nervous system, this division of the nervous system that helps to control blood vessels. It also has a role in gut activity, bladder activity, and even blood supply to the, to the, to the skeletal muscle. And it may well be that the disturbance in autonomic nervous system um, activity and the, the, the results of the research that's going on in Newcastle um, is going to help us with get a much better understanding of what may actually be going wrong in skeletal muscle and also possibly blood supply to the brain and the way in which perhaps decreased blood supply to the brain because of the autonomic nervous system dysfunction is causing these symptoms like cognitive um, uh, dysfunction with short-term memory, tension span uh, and concentration being very poor in these patients because that is an area where we, we, we really do need to make some headway. Um, I mean in addition to that uh, other pieces if you like of this jigsaw which is starting to fit into place are the role of the immune system and I think we're starting to change our mind about the role of the immune system in this illness. There used to be a, a feeling that the immune system abnormalities, which hadn't always been consistent or robust, were pointing to some sort of immune system deficiency in this illness, a defective immune system response. Whereas the, the sort of picture that is now emerging was of an immune system which may be uh, as a result of this viral infection that triggers the illness off, acting in a rather overactive state so that there is, in medical jargon, low level immune activation taking place. And one result of this is the production of immune system chemicals called cytokines. These are the immune system chemicals that you normally produce when you've got an infection, a flu-like infection, that make you feel so grotty. It's not the virus itself that makes you feel flu-like, it's the cytokines. And it's possible that these cytokines being produced on an ongoing um, basis at a, a low level are producing these sort of ongoing flu-like symptoms, malaise and everything else that goes with um, having ME. And at the same time, we now have drugs, and this is taking us on to possible forms of treatment, which can actually dampen down this cytokine activity. So I, I think by piecing these bits of muscle, brain, immune system, genetic factors together, we're starting to build up a more solid picture of what is going on in this illness. And I don't think we're going to find in the future that there's going to be some sudden breakthrough, a major piece of research which suddenly explains all this. It is going to be very much a question of providing further bits of information, further bits of this ME jigsaw and putting them into place and fitting them in, 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 together because all these different abnormalities are probably interacting to a certain degree. The MRC or Medical Research Council is the government body here in the UK that sits on a very large pot of money for medical and scientific research. And as I'm sure is the case in many other European countries, um, there has been considerable criticism from the patient community and also from politicians about the lack of research into the biomedical causes of ME. Um, now, up until recently, the Medical Research Council, I have to say, took very little notice of these complaints and concerns. But about three or four years ago, it decided it would set up an expert group on 
MECFS research and I was a member of this group and it was a very welcome move and it was something that I would certainly recommend to people who are campaigning to try and get government funded research elsewhere. So we had an expert group with a remit to identify a list of high priority and medium priority research items which it was felt should then be encouraged from the point of view of getting researchers to submit research applications to the MRC. So we identified this list of research priorities involving muscle, brain, immune system, sleep disturbance, genetics, and uh, one or two other subjects and invited applications from the research community. And what was so welcome about this process was that we didn't expect that many research applications to come in. But in actual fact, we got far more research applications than there was money available for. Total sum of about £1.5 million was made available of ring fence money for these research grants. And with very few exceptions, these were very high quality research applications. And in addition to that, many of them involved people who were totally new to this subject. So it was, I think, a very welcome and very productive exercise. And in the end, £1.5 million of government research money was distributed to five projects and we have five projects now underway. There is a study on sleep disturbance and also a drug treatment is being trialled for use in sleep disturbance in ME as part of that study. We have a study at the University of Liverpool which is taking forward the research on mitochondrial disturbance in skeletal muscle. We have a study looking for biomarkers um, uh, is, is there a biomarker, a, a blood abnormality which can be related to debilitating fatigue and this is starting off using patients with a very well defined condition called Schergen syndrome in which central fatigue is, is often a very prominent feature and it has a number of overlaps with MECFS. Um, and then we have a, a study on immune system um, functioning ME and this goes back to the point I was making about immune system activation in this illness and the production of these immune system chemicals. We know that when people with an illness called hepatitis uh, C are treated with interferon which is uh, one of these immune system chemicals they can actually develop an ME like illness as a side effect. So this study on immune system function and possible um, low level activation of the immune system in ME is going to look at this group of people who are being treated with interferon for hepatitis and see what differences there are between the group who don't develop MECFS like symptoms and the people who do develop MECFS like symptoms when they're treated with interferon. And then the final study is uh, a further study on autonomic nervous system dysfunction. This is this part of the nervous system which controls blood flow, blood vessels, pulse, heart rate. Um, and this will take forward some of the very important research that Professor Julia Newton and her colleagues at the University of Newcastle are, are already doing in this area. So that's five uh, very important studies now being financed by the Medical Research Council here in the UK. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube of tweet naar het MECVS Vereniging of mail naar wvp at me liggenstreepje cvsverenigingnl De beste vragen worden in een volgende video behandeld.